Hello, my dear students and the rest of the learners. Welcome to this presentation in which we are going to learn about the basic computer cabling and the setup. My name is Memen JM and I run a YouTube channel by the name MLSWAP ICT, through which I cover various topics in the field of ICT and the computers. And therefore, this topic or this video is just one of the many in the series. In this topic, we are going to learn about the power and data interface cables that are used in the computer and with other peripheral devices. And number two, we are going to look at the basic computer setup. When we speak about cables in the field of ICT or computers, we are generally referring to two types of cables, which are the power cables and the data interface cables. The power cables are those cables that connect the computer and the other peripheral devices to the main power outlet, linking the power supply unit to the outlet. They are the cables that supply the various devices with the power, including the parts inside the computer, as well as those that are outside the system unit. And therefore, when we are referring to power cables, we are simply referring to any cable whose call mandate or purpose is to provide the system unit or other peripheral devices with source of power so that they can be able to be functional. While the data interface cables are the cables that are used to connect the peripheral devices to the system unit in order to facilitate in the transmission of data, instructions and information to the system unit and from the system unit to the various devices. In other words, data interface cables are any other cables that are used with a computer or with other peripheral devices whose purpose is not to supply the various devices with power, but their main purpose or their main function is to provide communication link between the device and the central processing unit. Or simply put, data interface cables are those cables through which communication takes place. In other words, these are the cables through which instructions, data, or information is able to flow from one device to the other or from one part of the computer to the other. Here are some examples of some of those cables. So these diagrams, the first two diagrams illustrate the power cables. That is this diagram and this other one. So these ones, number one and number two are the power cables. So they are connected to the device and then they are connected to a source of power. Well, the data interface cables look as follows. So this is a data interface cable and it is usually a USB cable. This other one is also a data interface cable that usually connects the monitor to the system unit. Well, this other one is also a data interface cable but usually is used to link one device to the other for communication purposes. And therefore, this cable is mostly found on a network or where you have more than one device connected to each other or through what we call a network interface current. So my dear student, those are the two types of cables that we use or that you can find whenever you are handling a computer. A computer interface is a connection between a computer central processing unit and external peripheral devices that are operated under its control. So peripheral devices are interfaced with a system unit through the use of input or output ports and the cables. In other words, if you have a device connected to the system that you insert on a port that is a provision on the system unit through which the device is connected. So you insert 
the interface cable, that is the data interface cable to the port in the system unit. And at the same time, you insert it or you connect it to the device. And therefore, when we speak about computer interface, we are referring to that link between one device and the other. This can be either in form of a cable or in form of a wireless, a wireless channel. So the main types of data interface cables and the ports that are normally found in the area of computers are CDO, USB, AGP, firewall, Bluetooth, modem ports or modem ports, parallel, SCSI, PS stroke 2, audio, and LAN ports. Why am I listing the interface cables together with the ports? The reason is because a data interface cable of a certain type will always work with a port of a certain type. If the data interface cable is, for example, zero, it will require to be inserted or connected to a port that is serial in form or in nature or in design. So let's look at uh, the serial cables and the ports. These send data one bit at a time and are very good for sending information over a long distance. The serial ports are also called communication port one or COM1, COM2, COM3, COM4, and other COM series. It is also referred to as RS-232 port. They are usually of two types. These are the 25 pin and the 90 pin. The serial cables are slower than the parallel cables, but they allow for two-way communications. They are much more reliable than the parallel cables. They are used to connect the devices like the external modems, the mice, and serial printers. Here are some illustrations of such kind of ports and the cables. So this one, this diagram here illustrates a communication port in which the RS232 cable is inserted or connected. And therefore, this connector for the serial cable or for the RS232 serial cable is inserted in a communication port to provide the link between the device and the system unit. The second type is the parallel. These are used to connect external devices that need to send or receive a lot of data over a short distance between or because they send 80 bits of data simultaneously across eight parallel wires. If a cable uses eight conductors to transmit data at the same time, it is seen to be an 80-bit parallel cable. They transmit data faster over a short distance. They are used for connecting and transmitting information simultaneously using a set of many conductors or wires. The parallel ports are also called Centronic spot, for example, LPT1, line printer one. The parallel ports, that is 25 pin D-shaped hose, mainly connects printers, scanners, portable CD-ROM drives, and network adapters. And here is an illustration of such a port. You can see, my dear student, that this port has several Holes in it. These are holes, and they can also be pins. And you can see that if you count them, they are 25. So under each, a pin is inserted. And therefore, we call this one a 25 pin parallel port. 
25 is the total number of the pins or holes that the pot contains. The third type of cables and the pots are called the universal serial bus, which is normally abbreviated as USB. These provide very high speed and the quality data transmission one bit at a time over long distances and supports a wide range of peripheral devices. For example, printers, modems, mouse, keyboard, and other computer gadgets. For you to be able to learn more about these devices, search for the various topics under the MLSOP ICT YouTube channel, which include the video on the input devices, the video on output devices, the video on the secondary storage devices and media, amongst others. Now, the USB cables and the ports have faster speeds of data transmission than the serial and the parallel cables and the ports. Most of the devices connected using USB cables are plug and play devices. Plug and play means that you do not require to install a program separately when you connect the device on a system unit. It means that once you connect the device in the system unit, that device is automatically recognized by the operating system and it is installed automatically without the need for you to install any additional software. Here are some examples of USB ports. So this is how a USB port looks like in the system unit or any other device that makes use of the USB port or USB cable, while this one is a USB cable. So this USB cable, if you look at it, it has one side, which is called a connector. This connector is inserted in a USB port for it to be functional. And therefore, this is a USB port and it makes use of a USB cable. So plug and play devices, as I have already said, are those that configure themselves once they are connected to the system unit. Hot swap is an operating system feature that allows you to unplug a device and plug a new one while the computer is still running without having to first shut it down. The special thing about USB is that devices can be in this change on it. That is, you can plug several devices one at a time through the same port. For example, you can plug a modem into the port, then remove it and plug a keyboard into the same port. And also, you can even connect a modem on the same port. So simply, we are saying that a USB port and a USB cable can be able to accommodate various devices as long as they make use of a USB port or USB cable. The fourth type of port and cable, that is data interface cables, are what we call the small computer systems interface, which is normal as I. These transmit data in a parallel, but are faster than the parallel cables and a single port allows one to connect up to eight peripheral devices. For you to be able to identify this kind of port, you will always find the acronym SCSI indicated just next to the port. Number five, we have what we call the accelerated graphics port, abbreviated as AGP. These are used to connect the monitors and are able to support high speed graphics and other video input. The two common connectors used as monitors and the 15-pin ID connector. 
Now, the question that many of you may be asking yourselves is, how do you name these pots? Simply, if, for example, a pot is named as a nine pin D, it simply means that if you count the number of pins within that pot will be nine, and they are going to be pins, and the shape of that uh, pot will always be a D shape. Let's, for example, look at this diagram. The nine pin D pot. If you look at the nine pin and D pot, you will find out that it is true, it has nine pins. Let's count them. We have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five, we have six, we have seven, we have eight, we have nine here. And therefore, those are nine. They are nine what? They are nine pins. But what is the shape of this pot? The shape of this pot, if you look at it carefully, it is a D shape. When we look at the 15 pin D pot, you realize that when you look at this pot, it has 15 holes in which you insert the pins. Or if you look at this other one, you can see it has pins. So whether a pot contains pins or it has holes through which the pins can be inserted, you still refer to them or to such a kind of pots. Like this pot and this other pot, you still refer to them, you still refer to them as pin pots. So we have 15 pin D pot, this one, and we have 15 pin high D pot. So whether the pot contains holes through which pins are inserted, or the pot contains pins that are inserted in holes, still they are referred to as the pin pots. And all of them, you can see, they are D shaped. And therefore, we call them the 15 pin D pot. And this other one is 15 pin high D connector. This one is a connector. This connector is inserted on a pot. Note, every data interface cable has a connector. So the shape of that connector is determined by the shape in which, or the, or the shape of the pot in which it will be inserted. So we can have pots that resemble the connector. And we can have connectors that resemble the pots. The sixth type of pot and the cable is what we call the PS stroke two, six pin pots. So you can use either the term six pin pots or you just call it the PS stroke two pots or connectors. This is a pot used to connect the new PS stroke two mouse and the keyboards and is smaller than the five D uh, pots. It is important for me to inform you, my dear student, and the other learners, that some of these uh, pots and the connectors are getting outdated and they are being replaced with the current USB pots and connectors. And therefore, you may not find some of these type of pots or some of these types of connectors today. Just as a reminder, a pot makes use of a connector. And therefore, the connector is that part of a data interface cable which is inserted in its relevant port. And therefore, a connector or a data interface cable cannot function if it does not have a connector. And at the same time, that peripheral device, even if it contains the data interface cable, 
it will not be able to be inserted on a system unit if that system unit lacks a port. And therefore, simply put, a data interface cable, which is the cable that is used to connect a peripheral device to the system unit, cannot work if it does not have a connector. A connector, therefore, is that section or that part of the data interface cable that is inserted on the relevant port within the device. So if, for example, a computer has PS through two ports that looks, as you can see, it means that the device that will work through these ports will have to be having or will have to have a PS stroke two connector. And therefore, my dear students, always remember that the type of connector that the data interface cable has is the one that also determines whether the computer or the device that will make use of it will be able to use it or not. What am I saying? What I'm saying simply is, if your system unit or device contains a certain kind of port like PS stroke two, you should always know that the type of device you are going to connect to that port must have a connector of the same type. So if the connector is PS stroke two, then that device will make use of PS stroke two port. Good. Number seven is what we call the firewall or IEEE 1394. You can also call it IEEE 1394. These are faster than the USB and are used to connect high speed printers and even video cameras. The eighth type of connector and type of ports or type of data interface cables and type of ports are the audio. These are found on a sound interface adapter and are used to connect devices such as microphone, speakers, and other portable audio equipment. As you can see, my dear students and the other learners, is that these are diagrams to illustrate these type of ports. If you look keenly, just as I have said, this one that I have highlighted is an audio connector. How will this audio connector work? The audio connector will have to be inserted or connected to a device that contains audio port. So audio connectors will work with the audio ports. So if it happens that you purchased a device that does not make use of the type of ports that you have in your device, it simply means that it doesn't matter how sophisticated and costly that device is, but what that simply means is that that device will not function with your system unit or with your device. So you must always pay keen attention to the type of ports that your devices contain so that as you go to purchase various devices and the cables, you purchase cables that match or you purchase devices that contain data interface cables that match with the ports in your device. So you don't just wake up like that and then you go to the market and then you purchase a device without knowing how you are going to connect it with your device. So you must always, first of all, look and analyze properly and keenly the type of ports that your device contain. If you have a laptop or you have a computer and desktop computer, and you want to, for example, purchase a printer to use with that computer, one of the key factors you must look at or consider are the type of ports that your computer contains. If it contains USB ports, go to the market and purchase a device that will make use of a data interface cable that is of USB type. If your port is audio, 
or if your device contains audio ports, go and purchase a device that will contain or have a data interface cable that is of audio type and the shape should be the same. Good. So let's proceed. The other type of ports or cables are the Bluetooth and the infrared cables and the ports. And Bluetooth is a wireless interface that uses short radio waves over distances of about 30 feet broadcast to connect to any Bluetooth enabled device. Infrared is a wireless interface that uses infrared to connect to infrared enabled devices. Here is an example of a Bluetooth device. Note, if you look keenly, this device is labeled Bluetooth and on its edge, you find a connector. This connector is of USB type. So what does that mean? It means that for you to be able to make use of this Bluetooth device, you have to ensure that the device you are going to use this Bluetooth with contains a USB port. Why? It is because the Bluetooth device that you want to use with your computer or with your device contains a connector which is of USB type. The other type of connector or ports is the LAN ports. The LAN ports are used for connecting the computer to local area networks. The other type of ports are the modem ports. These are used for plugging an external modem into the computer. So the following are some samples for various cables and ports that you can use with your various devices. If you look keenly, we have several types of the ports. So some of these, like the ones that I've highlighted, are for the mouse and the keyboard. Then we have the USB ones. And you can see there are signs or symbols indicated. We have this type of port that we've already discussed. And if you look at it keenly, you will see that it has a label called the printer. And the rest continues. In most of the devices or most of the computers, the ports will not only have the sign and the symbol, but some of them will also have some names. For example, in this port here, you can see we have joystick. Then we have mic. We have line in. We have speakers. And they are clearly labeled. And therefore, you can be able to identify the ports either using their names or using their symbols or just look at the way they look like. And therefore, if you are not very sure of what kind of cable that you are going to use with a certain device, look for whether there is a name that is just next to that port. And that will tell you the type of device that we expect it to connect. So if, for example, you are going to make use of a certain monitor, and that monitor is a VGA type of monitor, it simply means that you look for the port that is labeled as VGA. So that is the port through which you are going to connect your device. So once you've been able to identify the type of cables that you are supposed to use, the type of ports, and also the type of connectors that your device or your computer can make use of, then the next thing is to ask yourself whether you know how you can be able to do the connections. And therefore, when we talk about basic computer setup, we are referring to the sequence of steps that are followed in setting up or preparing a new or old computer hardware to be ready for use. It involves connecting various devices inside and outside the system unit, as well as installing the software that is necessary to make the hardware to function. There are certain precautions that you must always observe when attempting to carry out a setup activity. Some of these precautions include, number one, disconnect all devices 
from power source before starting to work on them. Number two, do not work on any device without the guidance of the teacher. Number three, never work alone because you may need help in the case of any emergency. Number four, discharge any static electricity by touching an apt metallic object and then wearing an anti-static wrist member. So what are some of the tools and other requirements that you need when you're setting up a computer? Number one, you should ensure that you have different sizes and sharper screwdrivers. Number two, always ensure that you have an anti-static risk member. Number three, ensure that you have pliers that have a narrow nose. Number four, ensure that you have a manufacturer's manual for the device which you are going to use in case you get stuck in relation to issues pertaining to the, to the connections. Number five, ensure that you have the necessary software and then you have the peripheral devices that will be involved in the connection and they also have a dismantled system unit and the interface as well as the relevant power cables. So what are some of the steps or what are the steps that were supposed to follow when you wanted to connect basic components to the motherboard? Now, for those students that might not uh, know what a motherboard is, a motherboard is simply the main board that is found inside a system unit of a computer. Therefore, if you get a system unit of a computer and then you open it, what we are going to find inside is a large board, which we call the main board. And that board is what we call the mother board. In case you don't remember, or you have not read, or you don't know what a mother board is, you can be able to get more detailed information on the same from the video, which is already posted in the YouTube channel by the name MLSOP ICT with the name processing devices and memories. So you can refer to that video so that you can be able to see those diagrams and images of motherboard. So once you have all what you require to do the setup and you are set, then the following is the procedure that you are supposed to follow. Number one, always ensure that you have disconnected power cables from the main power source. My dear students, never make a mistake of opening a system unit or doing any connections to any devices if they are already connected to a source of power. This can be very harmful and dangerous, not only to you as the user, but that can also cause damage to the devices that you are using. Number two, open or remove the cover of the system unit. Number three, identify motherboard slots and the components by studying the manufacturer's manual. Number four, connect the hand disk, floppy, and optical drives to the motherboard by sliding each into its bay and screwing it into place. Number five, connect the drives to power connectors from the power supply unit. Number six, connect each drive to the motherboard with the use of special ribbon cables by identifying pin one as labeled on the drive socket and matching it with the red or brown continuous line of the ribbon cable. Now, let me emphasize this point on the aspect of pin one. In the motherboard, when you open the motherboard and you want to make any connection, especially with the use of the ribbon cables, the manufacturers have always highlighted or indicated the pin one to guide you as you insert your ribbon cable so that you do not insert it in the wrong way. So always identify the pin one that is well labeled on the motherboard and also do the same for the cable. And that will help you in matching the ribbon cable together with the socket in which the ribbon cable is supposed to be inserted. Number seven, insert 
expansion cans into their slots, including any other internal component. What is an expansion can? If you want to get more information about the expansion cans, I still refer you to the video by the title, Processing Devices, Computer Processing Devices and the Memories that is already posted in MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel. And when you do that, you'll be able to see clearly the images for expansion cans. But simply, an expansion can is that can which you purchase with a device. And when you come to your system unit, you open that system unit, insert that expansion can on the expansion slot. And then that expansion can will give you a provision that we call a port through which you can be able to connect a peripheral device. So when you look at the system unit and you find that the system unit from the outside, there are certain ports, whether USB ports, they are serial ports or whichever type of port, it simply means that when you open that system unit, you will find an expansion can that contains the ports. In a few ones, we are saying that ports are found on expansion cans. And therefore, if you don't find a certain type of port on your system unit, it simply means that your system unit motherboard does not have an expansion can. So what you need to do is find out or open the system unit and find out whether it has provisions which we call expansion slots. If the expansion slots are available, then just go to the market and look for an expansion can. If you want to connect, for example, a monitor, just ask the seller for a graphics can or an expansion can that you are going to insert on your expansion slot. And once you do that, there will be a port through which you will be able to connect your device. Number nine, if installation is complete, replace the system unit's cover. So the following are the steps of connecting other computer peripherals to the system unit. In other words, these are the steps of the procedure that you are supposed to follow to connect any device you purchase from the market to your system unit so that it becomes part and parcel of your computer system. Number one, identify each peripheral device's port and the interface cable. This simply means that, just as I have said, when you purchase that peripheral device, find out what kind of port it contains. And that will also guide you in knowing the type of inter interface cable that you need to purchase. And then you come and also check on the port that your computer or your system unit contains. Number two, gently and carefully connect the interface cable of each device to the correct port and to the device if it is not already fixed permanently. What does this step mean, my dear students? It simply means that if you have bought a peripheral device, for example, a printer, and this printer has a separate interface cable, what you need to do is once you come to your system unit, get your printer, get your interface cable, and then insert that interface cable on the printer. And then once you have connected that interface cable to your printer, look for a port in the system unit that can be able to accommodate or accept that connector. And therefore, insert the interface cable's connector to that port. Number three, connect the computer and other components to the power source with the use of their power cables. Remember, I have already said, never connect devices that have already been connected to a source of power. You should always ensure that there is no power connection or a provision to your device. Once you have ensured that that one is okay, or the device is not already connected to a source of power, do your connections. And then once you have done that, get a power interface cable. Connect that power interface cable to your device and also to a source of power. Once you have done that, then you can move on to the next step and connect each drive to the motherboard with the use of special ribbon cables. Now that one, we have already uh, talked about it. So the next step you're supposed to do is once you have done your connections, 
you have connected your devices properly, you have also connected your devices to power cables, then switch on the power socket and then switch on the computer we displayed on the screen in order to see whether the post displays any error message. Post stands for power on self-test. Anytime you boot your computer for the first time or anytime you do what we call cold booting or warm booting, the system unit or the system uh, uh, software or the operating system will be able to check whether the various devices are available. And therefore, during the booting process, there are various messages that will be displayed on your screen to indicate whether certain devices are available or not. If they are not available, then you will be able to be given an alert by the operating system during the booting process. Number six, if there is, oh, number five, if there is successful boot, that simply means that the computer was properly set up. So you need to install programs if computer is completely new, or if you have added a new hardware, that means its own program. In the case you want to perform a certain activity using a peripheral device connected to a computer, then you realize that the device is not responding the following would be some of the reasons that might be making this to happen. In other words, if you have connected your devices to the system unit, and you have also connected the power cables, but you find that the devices are not yet functioning as you expect, the following are some of the things or some of the reasons that might have caused this. Number one, you might be having loose device interface connection. So what you need to do is to check the connections and ensure that each device is tightly connected. So you just get hold of your peripheral device, check the data interface cable, find out whether it is properly inserted and do the same to all the others, including checking whether the data interface cable is properly connected on the system unit and also check uh, all other cables to ensure that they are all properly fixed and that they are firm. Number two, Check the device's cable to find out whether it has come out of its port. So connect the cable to the port. Number three, the device might be off from power. If the device is connected to power, switch the power on. And if it's not connected, then connect its power cable to power source. Number four, the device might not be well installed on the computer. So what you need to do is to get its appropriate software and follow its user manual to install it in the computer. Number five, the device might have been connected on the wrong port. Remember I have said that USB ports require USB connectors, that is USB cables. So always ensure that there's a tally, there's a match between the ports that you are going to use and the connectors or the type of cables. So if you find that there's a problem, check whether the ports or the USB cables or the USB or, or the ports. In other words, let me put it like this. If you find that the device has not been connected to the correct port, for example, you have been trying to connect a USB port or a USB cable to a different kind of port, what you just need to do is to remove the device from its ports where you have connected it and then connect it to the appropriate port. Remember, some of the ports might be looking similar, might be resembling each other, but there are some which are specifically set to only allow certain devices to be connected on them. So what you need to do is to check the label or the name that has been written against the port so that we are able to identify whether that port is for that device. If not, change and connect that device to the correct port. With that, we have come to the end of this topic on computer cabling and the computer basic setup. Congratulations for choosing to acquire computer and ICT knowledge and skills from us through our YouTube channel, MLSWAP ICT. You can search for more computer and ICT related topics from the MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel. In addition, you can search for life skills and motivational topics from our other YouTube channel by the name MLSWAP Enterprises International. Kindly subscribe on our YouTube channels if you have not already done so and hit the notification bell on both 
of the YouTube channels so that you can be able to receive current updates once any new video is posted. In case free, write to us through our email address, which is mlswap at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening to me and thank you very much for choosing our channel as your channel to learn and acquire ICT or computer knowledge and skills. God bless you.